Just a quick note, this is likely a pretty boring video. I'm going to spend some time digging into an issue I'm having with not getting back CPU flag information when I make an interrupt call from FreeDOS into my BIOS. If you enjoy FreeDOS, you enjoy assembly and interrupt type of coding, and just kind of want to see what I'm going through for troubleshooting or, or think you could uh, possibly give some advice here. This might be a, an interesting video, but for the majority, uh, probably a video uh, that you're not going to necessarily enjoy a whole lot. But throwing it up here in case anybody uh, has interest and has any uh, thoughts or suggestions. Thanks. In this video, I am talking through an issue I've run into that I haven't been able to find a workaround for. This project is my 286 homebrew build and recently I've added a CF card through an IDE interface and I have now implemented in addition to CHS I also have support for LBA and I think I'm getting closer to actually uh, being able to read the full file system uh, through that CF card. However, I'm running into an issue where when I make an interrupt call from FreeDOS into my BIOS, I'm not getting back updated flags, processor flags. And what you're seeing in this video is just a startup clip. And in the clip, you're seeing it log a whole bunch of uh, verbose logging that I have going out to this uh, serial output from my 286 on the right. And on the left is the VGA output of the system. And I've you know built a custom kernel and in that kernel I'm doing some injection or basically adding some extra tests, for example, to test this interrupt. And I'll flip over to my actual build system here and walk through that. But what I'm expecting to come back on the VGA output where it's showing that it reads a flags of 0002, I'm expecting to get a different value, like a 65 in hex. And I'll, I'll walk through that code and see if uh, any of you have any ideas. And so I think I'm making progress on the disk side of things, and uh, I can kind of force some of these... Um, I can force some of the flag information to be the way I think it should be, and then I, I actually can get quite a bit further where my LBA and CHS information all seem to line up okay, and it looks like I'm successfully getting through what I need to for the disk I.O. Uh, but I can't be doing that through all the code, and obviously that's not the right way to do it. So I've got to figure out why when I submit an interrupt request from FreeDOS, my BIOS receives all the information correctly and it sets any return registers, including the flags register, and everything comes back to FreeDOS with the exception of the flags. So let me dive into my workbench system just so you can kind of see what I'm looking at here. So here's my development machine with the same output that you just saw from that previous boot up clip. And if I take a look at this for a second, I can scroll up on this output, on my debug output, and first things I do is I print out you know, CHS information, just so I know cylinders, head sectors, etc., and just a bunch of debug information. Here's my first sector on my disk, and, and that really gets the bootloader going. And then I am logging interrupt calls. So anytime that FreeDOS is making an interrupt call to my BIOS on my 286 board, I am just showing, for example, here interrupt 13 and function 41. And then these are the registers going in. These are the registers coming out. And what you're seeing is registers A, B, C, D, and then C, S, D, S, E, S. And then I have my uh, SI and DI, and then I have my flags. And this is the one where I'm running into issues that the, the what I'm expecting to be coming back out of these calls is not coming back out. And if I just scroll down maybe to the bottom, towards the bottom of this, what you'll see here is 
I have this initial dot, 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 one, two, three, and then I say testing interrupt. And so that's just what I'm going to look for over here, see if I can find that. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit more. So here's my init disk. And it would have been before that. Okay, so here's the section testing interrupt. And what I logged is that I called interrupt 15 and I just made up, I just grabbed that interrupt. It wasn't being used, but from my free DOS, I'm basically raising interrupt 15 or calling interrupt 15 to my system. And I'm sending in these values. And again, I have my A, B, C, D registers and I had put in some values there. And then I have my C, S, D, S, E, S. And then I can go through and look at my other couple of uh, uh, DI and SI registers and then my flags. And then coming out of that, what I do is I actually change in my BIOS in that interrupt call. I then put new values into all of those and send it back. And the value that I'm sending out of the interrupt handler is a 43 for the flags register. But once it gets to free DOS and I print out the value of the flags register, I am viewing a 0002. So if I just start out, I'll just jump over to free DOS for a second. Uh, so I have free DOS running here in a virtual machine and this is where I'm actually building. And I'm gonna get into the kernel folder and edit uh, main.c. And in it, I've placed in a test interrupt routine. And if I get down to that, you can see that here, before I show the sign-on banner, basically what shows this uh, copyright information, I'm gonna go ahead and call this procedure of test interrupt, which looks like this. And I, use this i reg uh, s i then fill it in and i say okay here's my a value b value cd so my a b c d registers and then di si and then i call interrupt 15 and then coming out of that i want to print out all of those values so i print out a b c d di si and then my flags and I'm just pulling those back from that regs.a.b.c, uh, uh, the di, the si, and the flags. And that's what I would expect to pull back the proper values. And then what that's going to do is show up up here where you see this init test and you see all these values get filled in. And that is happening. So I can see up here, it says, you know, testing interrupt. And then I see the output. And then the question is, what did I see on the 286 side of things? And on the 286 side of things, I can see that there was an interrupt 15 right here that was called. And this is the information that came across. And so what I had set down here was 1122. I can see that 0033445566677. And then I can keep on going over the DI over here. I'm showing it right here is my 8899. And then my SI is AABB. And I didn't mess with changing CSDS or ES. Of course, uh, the code segment would change when it uh, gets to my interrupt and I didn't touch DS or ES. And then as far as flags, I wouldn't have touched flags. So whatever flags were set on the 280 or on the the C, C code you see on the right would have made it from free DOS over and it looks like it came in as a 46. So then if I maybe slide this off to the side a second and I pull up my source code on my 286 and maybe I'll just slide this to the left half of the screen. Okay, so if I look at my 286 code for a second, I have a interrupt or that 15. So when it comes in, the interrupt is uh, raised from the pre DOS side of things. It comes in here and I log out the 15 colon, which is what you're seeing here. And then I basically grab the value of AX, BX, CX, DX, CS, DS, ES, DI, SI, and then the flags. And so I'm running through all of that and printing it out.
and the output you can see here is the 11220033, etc. But then after I read all of that out, I turn around and I set some new values. So I load up, uh, this would be what, a 65 in decimal. So these two flags that I want to set, the zero flag and also the carry flag, I want to set those. And then I basically take that byte of data and save it to my flags register. I then push my flags register so that I can pop it later before I get out of here so that I don't mess up anything along the way because that's what I want to be sent out. I then move some values into my ABCD, DISI, and you can see what test values I put there. And then on the VGA output, you know, what FreeDOS receives back and prints out then is this one, two, three, four, that matches five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, zero, two, four, six, eight, and then the three, five, seven, nine, but it's printing a flags of two. And so somewhere I am losing, I'm not getting this 65 sent over. And of course that would show up in hex instead. So what, 41? but I'm not getting that value to come across over here. And I don't think I'm messing up the flags. I'm not great with assembly. I'm fairly new to it, but uh, I've been learning a bunch, but it seems like I should be able to move into my AH. SAHF should allow me then to write that to my flags register. I then push it and then I end up popping it down here. The only other things I do is some knobs and then I do a return. And then when it returns, it's gonna go back to that C code and it's gonna be right here. So then I'm gonna do a print F and then I'm gonna go ahead and do another print F. And then in that, as I scroll to the right, I get way down here and I have the uh, regs.flags which I believe is the right way to read that flags so that comes back. And the reason I say that is if I open up what this init disk normally would have in it, what I was finding is that just something as simple as seeing if the hard drive is detected, this BIOS and uh, NR drives, this flags was always coming back being set, which would then say, to the system that there were no disks and I would I would see that error message and, and the boot would stop, no hard disks detected. But if I manually just bypass the if or in here return a one, then it works fine. Now, of course, then the question is, well, do I have something screwed up in my int 13 in that case? And I could go back and look at my interrupt 13. So if I did that for a second, that would be my disk and in this case, uh, for the interrupt, we're looking at function 8. And so if I go look at function 8 in here, that is my get current drive params. And I can scroll down through that, but at the end of that, I clear the carry flag, which is that last bit. So it should be a 0. And that's if it was asking for disk 80. And so as for dis80, I set this and then it jumps to my dot out. But the first thing I do is I push the flags and then again, I pop them and return my IRET down here. And of course I can go back to my log data and I can look where did it call an 08 and I might have to search here for a little bit to find it, but there would be an 08 call in here somewhere. And I can validate that it is showing on my output side of things that I'm sending the right flag as far as what's being sent out from the 286 perspective. Um, but for some reason, once I get into my C code, that flags register is not getting populated with whatever was actually sent out. And I don't know if that is a bug. It's something I have misconfigured in my uh, build. I'm using pretty much the build out of the box for, for the, uh, free DOS side of things. And maybe what I'll do here is I'll just copy all of this for a second. Good old notepad plus plus, and I paste this in. I'll zoom in and I'll see if I can go find where I would have a 1308. 
But like here's an example of a 1308 call and I could look through these and that would have been not for a disk 80. So let me find one for a disk 80. So maybe here's one I would zoom in on. Um, but that's an example where what I did was return an 86, but somehow, and this is uh, what's coming out of the FreeDOS side of things, what it actually received was a 1622 for flag. So uh, it just, it's not, just not lining up. What I'm saying I want out by the time I get into FreeDOS and read the dot flags, that's not working right. And I could go to the FreeDOS side of things where I'm actually logging this out. Um, and that may or may, let's see if I've got that showing up on my logged output here. Uh, flags, here's this 1622. So what I'm doing is after I make this call, which is interrupt 13, function eight, I pass it disk 80 and all the other registers. And then coming back from that, I have the flags at a value of 86, leaving my BIOS code. But once FreeDOS gets it, it sees it as a 1622 for some reason. And then at that point, I've got problems. So, you know, all of the rest of this code, if I go in and I kind of force FreeDOS and build it to just not look at those flags or just assume that I got back the values that I was hoping to get back in the flags, you know, I, it'll actually have all the proper properly calculated uh, information here. So this will match. I'll, I'll get the essentially a match. It'll get a 991.15.63 instead of this 992.15.63. Uh, but then I can continue on where it's then trying to read out additional information from the disk. Uh, and it seems like I can get through, get through that uh, the way I would expect to. What I'm looking for is uh, how to figure out what I'm missing here. You know, I should be able to have this type of a call where I fill this in, I set the values, I make the interrupt call, and then coming back out of that, I should then be able to read the flags, but those flags aren't correct, and then it throws up the rest of the, throws off the rest of the logic that's going on. Uh, so kind of an interesting problem, and I'm sure the problem could be all over the place, but what I'm doing for this test again is I'm going back to my FreeDOS and in the main of the kernel I added this procedure so if anybody's seeing something wrong with that procedure let me know I'm putting in some test values I call the interrupt and then I turn around and I read out the values and again for the flags I'm just reading regs.flags and expecting that to be whatever I would have set on my BIOS. And my BIOS, if I go back to that for a second, and I pull up that interrupt handler, you know, that's where it's running through this and printing out all the stuff through my debug, setting new values. The new value I'm setting for my flags is this value here which this should write this value to that flags register. And then I push it, I pop it and I get out. And in the middle, I do printing of the flags register just to see if uh, that all looks correct. And what I do is when it comes to the flags and I get down here, I do load up the flags back into AH and then I store it into a piece of memory and then I jump to this routine, I read it back, and that's just so that along the way, not, I don't have to worry about something else messing up those flags. And I, I think this should be accurate, what I'm expecting to see. Um, and maybe I've got something wrong there, but again, if this is setting it, pushing it, and then I don't pop it until down here, at that point, I should have this flags register that looks like that. And then I'm doing an I, I return and a knob shouldn't be messing with my flags, I don't think. But that's what I've got to figure out. And other things maybe, I guess, as I'm looking at code, I know back on the code over here in the kernel, there's also a file. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, 
uh, this PCB.h. So there's process control and interrupt data structures in case this is helpful for anybody. Uh, but as I get down into here, I do notice you know, there is some commentary about maybe a couple of different type of structures. Uh, I am using Watcom for my build. Uh, this is talking MSC, I assume that's Microsoft's uh, compiler or Borland. And I notice the structures are a little bit different. Flags at 26 versus 28. But again, when the flags comes back, it's reading the old value. So it's like it never even got set. And maybe that's because it's writing at 26 instead of 28 or something like that. Uh, but then I'm not sure what I would change to actually impact that. If I go back over to my virtual environment, I can get out of this file. You know, there is oh, a batch file for configuration. And if I go through this real quickly, I'm setting it up for NASM. Uh, when I get into the compiler, I'm setting it for Watcom. I'm setting my CPU to 86. I don't believe 286 is a valid option. So it's 86, 186, or 386. And 186, I think, is a more of an embedded type of version of the 8086. Uh, so I'm using 86. And I'm using FAT16. And that's about it as far as this configuration is concerned. So I'm sure I'm missing something. I am not an assembly or C expert, so I definitely could be doing something incorrectly there, or maybe I have something misconfigured, or maybe this is a bug. I've been doing some searching. I'm not finding anything that jumps out as far as a known issue, uh, as, as far as this is concerned. I think as far as NASM, I could probably uh, take a look at what version I'm using. And I thought there was a... switch to get the version so just dash v so my nasm is version 2.15.05 and as far as the free dos source this should be the latest uh, that has been available on the github site for it and I'm not sure, maybe release or read me. Uh, let me take a look at that. So it looks like version 2.43, uh, if that is helpful, is what I'm using. But I think that's the latest that I can get off of GitHub, unless it's changed in the last week or two. Uh, so I think that is about it as far as my setup. And I've got the Watcom. I've got the source code. I think there is a ZP. ZP1, I believe, is how it's set in case it has to do with some alignment issue going on here. I don't know if that's right or not. And I think that's here in this uh, Watcom.make. And the flags include the ZP1, which I believe is how it should be set. And also down in this PCB file that I was in earlier, when it looked at that, it said that uh, ZP1 must be set to 1, and I've not changed that. So if I go out to that file, or I go to my build file, uh, I should see that these are all what you see here. There aren't any changes that I've made to that type of ZP setting. That's about it, so probably not the most interesting video, but that's where I'm stuck, and I'm going to be doing some digging. I'll probably do some posting out on whether it's Reddit or other uh, locations, uh, communities I can find if anybody happens to have any ideas on this. I appreciate any help or uh, tips or suggestions anybody might have. Thanks. Thanks.